Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Stevens. I run the Men's Health Clinic based in Poole, Dorset. Today we're going to be talking about how to get TRT in the UK. So, first things first, what are your symptoms? Common presenting symptoms include loss of libido and erectile dysfunction. Now, erections are a complex neurovascular mechanism under hormonal control. So, it isn't as simple as saying, okay, low testosterone causes erectile dysfunction. If I sort my testosterone out, it will sort out my erections. However, it is a very common cause of erectile dysfunction and low libido. Brain fog, something I've had a few times today, trying to do these videos. <laughs> Essentially, you can have a loss of clarity of thought, loss of drive and determination. You're not firing all cylinders, essentially. It's, it's a strange thing. I think some guys describe it as a sort of depersonalization, where they feel as if they're in the room, but not in the room, and they're unab unable to concentrate and fulfill tasks that they would normally fulfill uh, very simply without any sort of thought or consideration. So it's, an off it's often a com common presenting symptom. Tired all the time and loss of lean muscle mass. It's no secret, testosterone is a performance enhancing drug. Anabolic steroids are synthetic versions of testosterone. Now they are used obviously in sports to get bigger, stronger, faster. So testosterone is a performance enhancing drug. However, in TRT, that's not the point of testosterone. Testosterone is to get you back to where your genetics, physiology and lifestyle are. I always think about it as a base. So we can optimize your testosterone which will allow you to address all the other factors that are important for health. So lifestyle, nutrition and exercise. If you've got a crappy diet, if, you, if you're still burning the candle at both ends, we can optimize your testosterone, but it won't get you to where you want to be. So in reality, testosterone is that base that you need to allow you to achieve all the other things. The rest is really up to you. We can help you with the testosterone. We can get you back to where you should be, but the rest is up to you. So, other symptoms. Increased body fat, excessive sweating and night sweats, loss of body, facial and pubic hair, and increased breast tissue. So it's important to define your symptoms. Now, obviously, so you understand what's going on, but also because when you see your GP, he's got 10 minutes. He's often seen people before who have been acutely unwell. Mrs. Bloggs, who's got depression. Mrs. Thing, who's got cancer. The elderly people that need a lot of management. So you walk in as a supposedly fit, young, healthy man, and you go, oh, I think I'm worried about my testosterone. Now, we're all aware that GPs, and dare I say endocrinologists and urologists, aren't particularly up to date and au fait with TDS and male hypogonadism. So, you need to fight your case. So you need to know exactly what your symptoms are, what effect they're having on your quality of life, so that you can best talk to him in a, in a short, succinct way because it's 10 minutes, 10 minutes to do everything if you see your GP. So define your symptoms. Identify and address possible triggers. Now we all know the cornerstones of health are lifestyle, nutrition and exercise. So if you haven't addressed them, what are you doing? You know, you, again, it comes back down to the foundations. You need to address the foundations. So look at all those possible aspects and address them. Now, we're our own worst enemies at times. We do stupid things. We take intoxicating substances. So, you know, things like drugs and alcohol are obviously a major issue. 
Steroids, yeah. Okay, I don't want to go too much on about steroids because it's not the purpose of this, this blog. But we need to obviously understand that if you take steroids, you are a serious risk of shutting down your HPG access. Even with PCT. We did a, a patient demographic a few weeks ago and there's an alarming amount of guys who think they're doing it sensibly, doing a cycle, doing a recognized course of PCT and boom, they're shut down. So be careful guys. Do your research. Now, the British Society for Sexual Medicine Guidelines are a good starting place. Unfortunately, they're not wonderful, but they're a good starting place. Have a read of them. There's a link to them on the website. There's lots of issues with them, but you can argue they're safe. So essentially, one of the major issues is the reference range. So in the UK, the standard recognised reference range is 12 to 29 nanomoles per litre for testosterone. Now, when they created that reference range, they didn't take age into consideration. Now, you obviously know that testosterone drops with age. Now, whether you should accept that is a, is a different argument, but in reality, if it drops with age and they didn't take that into consideration, if you're 25, 30, 35, 40, and you've got a testosterone of 12, that's the testosterone of a 70, 80 year old man. Now, you know, unfortunately your GP or your, your endo will argue when it's within range. It's almost like the little Britain sketch, your, your computer says no. It's, it's just, it's nonsense, but it's a good starting place. So if you're less than that, you're entitled to treatment under the NHS. If you're more than that, then unfortunately, you know, your only real avenue is to go private because the reference range is a bit of a farce, quite frankly. Now at the Men's Health Clinic, we tend to take qualitative symptoms over quantitative levels. Now it's obviously important to measure quantitative levels, but it's really how you feel that's important. Because we don't know what your testosterone was when you were fit and healthy. Research, BSM guidelines. So yeah, have a read of them. They're okay. They're what your GP and your endo and urologist should be adhering to, but they're not optimal, unfortunately. Now, the internet is unregulated, so in reality you can find out whatever information you want out there and it could be complete garbage or it could be gold. Now, I would highly recommend Excel Mail. Again, there'll be a link to the website on the blog. And if you want to do a little bit of background reading, Testosterone, A Man's Guide by Nelson Virgil. Uh, that's a go-to book. So, what do you do? You go see a GP, tell him your symptoms, ask him for a blood test. Now, what blood test do you want? Well, you want a whole host of blood tests. Now, the diagnostic blood tests are your LH, your luteinizing hormone, your FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and your prolactin. These are pituitary hormones that send signals to the rest of the body, the FSH and LH to, to, the, to the testicles, which is obviously of relevance. Uh, but the prolactin is super important as well because it's one of the hormones that, if it's super high, it will give you an indication that there might be something else going on in the brain, such as pituitary adenoma. So it's important to measure that. And actually, incidentally, it's also a cause of erectile dysfunction and loss of libido and infertility. So it's something that should be measured anyway. So, follicle stimulating hormone, what does it do? Uh, it helps mature the sperm. It isn't the major player. The major player is luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone sends signals down to the testicles to stimulate the Leydig cells to produce testosterone. Also, LH is important in the brain. It helps, it's, it's often the difference between feeling good and feeling great on testosterone replacement therapy. We know that there are LH receptors all around the body, not just in the testicles. So it's important that that level is, is, is healthy, uh, which obviously it normally isn't in uh, guys with low testosterone. Uh, obviously dependent on your cause, and that's normally a secondary hypogonadism rather than the primary where it's high, uh, but it's sort of not really the subject of this, this discussion, so we'll, we'll crack on. So prolactin, as discussed, 
that's an important home hormone to be measured in your diagnostic workup. So we go to the meat and potatoes, testosterone. Total testosterone, obviously important, but it's not the be all and end all. Now, it's, it's the male sex hormone, as discussed, your quantitative levels uh, should be between 12 and 29. If you go by the NHS's guidelines uh, or reference ranges, but in reality, that total testosterone is a very basic test. Um, testosterone is broken down in part to DHT, to hydrotestosterone, which is important for the prostate, sexual maturation, and libido. Uh, it gets broken down to estrogen, estrogen. So super important hormone, something you do not want to crash on testosterone replacement therapy. If you, if you follow my uh, blogs and uh, Facebook forum, you'll know that I'm a, I just despise aromatase inhibitors. Uh, no, because they're very rarely needed. Uh, and one of the big issues about private medicine is their over-prescription. Um, but we won't go on about that, because I'll be here all day. Um, so, the other thing is so estrogen. So, it's super important hormone for libido, cardiovascular health, uh, and bone strength. Now, uh, again, it's one of the byproducts and free testosterone. Now, everybody wants to have a, have a high free testosterone because that's that's the sexy hormone. That's the one that's going to give you the uh, the quality of benefits of testosterone. Um, the other hormone that we need to look at, or okay, our chemical, is sex hormone binding globulin. Now, that's the primary chemical that decreases the amount of free testosterone. So you can have a relatively normal testosterone, but have a high sex hormone binding globulin, and that can decrease your free testosterone, so your bioavailable testosterone. So it's important to measure that. Now it's important to measure that, just so you do know how much free testosterone you've got, but also it's important from a protocol perspective. So we make amendments to your protocol based on your sex hormone binding globulin. So it's important that it is measured. So full blood count. Now testosterone stimulates erythropoiesis. Now that's the production of red blood cells in the bone marrow. So it's important to have a baseline um, and to monitor that regularly whilst you're on testosterone replacement therapy. So it should be part of your diagnostic workup. Now, uh, you, if, you, if you've done your research and know about hematocrits, and there's a lot of debate about what's a safe hematocrit, um, it's best to look at trends um, and discuss your levels with your TRT doctor. Forums are great, you know, obviously we, we run one, but in reality, you know, you can often get 10 different opinions about how to manage something that should be managed with one, one uh, process. So, hematocrit, it's important that you do monitor it because normally within the first 12 months, you can get a bit of a spike until your, your levels are super stable. Um, your body, essentially, your body's reacting to a spike in testosterone. Um, so it's stimulating the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. High hematocrit, as a response to testosterone replacement therapy, you've got to look at your things like vitamin B12, folate and ferritin, because if you're producing more red blood cells, then you need the substrates that allow the hemoglobin to be made. So, um, you know, the, I, think, I think the negative health consequences, the ne negative effects of having um, high hematocrit are not just because of the high viscosity of the blood. So if you imagine, putting water through a straw versus oil through a straw. It takes more pressure to push the water through. But So you don't want to have thick blood pumping around your body. But um, I'm, I, th I think there's, there's an issue with the quality of the blood uh, with the testosterone replacement therapy because if you're not increasing the amount of vitamin B12 and folate and ferritin, then that can sometimes be an issue. So what do you do about high hematocrit? We essentially donate blood. Um, if it's super high, then you look at aspirin to thin the blood down and uh, potentially an anti-hypertensive. So the same, again, the same discussion, oil through a straw takes more pressure. You need to have that constant pressure to supply the oxygen to the blood. 
So uh, you want to try and decrease that pressure and sometimes that can be an antihypertensive. I don't have anybody in antihypertensives anti um, because of high hematocrits. It's not necessary. My belief is it, it comes from people prescribing too high doses. Um, so it just it's 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 unnatural. It's it's just it's not necessary in ninety nine percent of the cases, um, or I'll answer ninety nine point nine 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 on the right protocol. So you've been to your doctor. He's fortunately agreed to a blood test. If a bare minimum, get your total testosterone, your full blood count, and your PSA. But ask him to do all the other bloods listed on. The page because they are super important however those basic bloods total testosterone full blood count uh, PSA LH and, and FSH will at least get you to the next step on the ladder um, you go back your levels are less than 12 then you need to be referred to an endocrinologist uh, or see a private TRT doctor um, if your levels are above that and you still feel like rubbish then you need to fight your, fight your, fight your battle I'm afraid um, ask him to do a free testosterone because the BSSM guidelines do say that if you are still having problems even with sort of an okay testosterone then you are a candidate for testosterone replacement therapy if your free testosterone is low most doctors aren't particularly educated in the subject um, so you're going to have to lead it, I'm afraid. Um, so, endocrinologist or private TRD doctor. Now, an endocrinologist is unfortunately bound by uh, the BSSM guidelines and local prescribing pro protocols. Now, the commonest medication that you're, you're going to be offered is Nibido. Now. I mean, I'll admit, we, we, when we started the clinic, we looked at Nibido as our first line drug because we were adhering to the BSM guidelines um, and we wanted to follow due process and everybody, without exception, crashed. Si after six weeks, you have a loading dose and then you're supposed to wait 12 weeks to do your blood tests. Everybody crashes. So it was 10 weeks, eight, eight weeks, six weeks. And then when you're on six week injections, essentially you're having massive doses of testosterone with subsequent spikes in your estrogen. Um, so you, you don't see the qualitative benefits of having stable levels. The body's funny, but the body actually likes to have stability. It would prefer a consistently high level or a consistently low level. It doesn't like fluctuations. And that's what tends to cause the problems in TRT is the fluctuation. So libido is something that you will be offered Resist it, say that you've been online, you've done your research, you don't want it, um, it'll, it will be pushed, but resist it. Now, other esters that are available on the NHS are down to your local prescribing guidelines. So, my personal favourite, as, as I already said, is testosterone and anthate. And the reason why I like it is it's a short acting ester, it's a single ester, it's easily controlled and control allows stability and that allows you the quantitative, qualitative benefits from having uh, a, an optimal testosterone protocol. The other option is Sustanon. Now uh, again if, if, you've, if you're aware of uh, our website and forum then you know I'm not a fan of Sustanon but it isn't, it isn't an unreasonable choice. Um, the issue with Sustanon is getting the right protocol it takes a lot of tinkering and it's sometimes difficult to manage estrogen. I believe because the prop ester causes that spike, and as I said, the spikes cause problems. So it's not my it's not my favourite. Um, no, it's not something I actually prescribe. I think I've got one guy out of 130 at the moment on um, Sustanon over testosterone and anthate. The others are on the gel. Now, again, if you go on the internet, you'll hear horror stories about the gel, say it's rubbish. I've got guys that are super happy on the gel who will not change the injection. Even though we go through the, the discussion about 
managing estrogen um, and control and effectiveness, long-term effectiveness, they, they will not change. They do not, they don't need to change. They're happy, they've got healthy libidos, they're exercising, they're doing all the things they want to do. So why, why, why rock the boat? So I, I completely agree with them. Um, so, what else? If you've gone to the NHS and you're unhappy with the NHS, come see us here at the Men's Health Clinic. Um, or see, I mean, you know, obviously, I, I would go and see a private TRT doctor uh, who is uh, au fait with testosterone replacement therapy. There are unfortunately some companies uh, out there uh, that you need to avoid. And um, so I would ask some questions when you approach them. Do your research, phone a few clinics, and you, you, you want to go with one that fits you, fits you and, and what you want. Uh, because again, it's all about you. Uh, as as was a, <laughs> a common phrase uh, that somebody, somebody mutters to me. Um, so questions to ask. Are you CQC registered, the Care Quality Commission? The answer should be yes. If the answer is no, goodbye. Do 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 not touch them with a the barge pole because they're not they're not regulated. Um, what choice of essence do you offer? Now the answer should be an anthate as your gold standard for the reasons discussed. Um, Sutton Sutton the first choice. Jeez, yeah, whatever. Um, do you prescribe HCG? The answer should be one hundred percent yes. Now a lot of guys say, so, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't want any more kids, I'm not worried about my testicular size, uh, so I don't need HCG. Nah, we well, do. Um, our understanding of the importance of luteinizing hormone is ever increasing. Now, as discussed, we know that it, there are receptors in the brain. And also, when you think of the steroid hormones, it comes down from a, a, a core chemical called pregnenolin. Now, uh, there's a whole cascade of hormones, and we know that LH actually upregulates, so it helps feed those other hormones. So, from a qualitative perspective, um, you want to have HCG irrespective of whether you want to maintain fertility or keep your testicles at a beautiful size. So, I always advocate HCG alongside every single person's TRT protocol. It's also quite good because you can manipulate the estrogen. Um, Having TRT is it's as, it's as good as we can we can get, but we can't actually mimic your natural production of testosterone and the subsequent byproducts of estrogen, DHT, and free test. Now, a way of doing that is uh, through HCG. Now, we won't go into that now, but if you um if you follow the website and the, the forum etc., we do discuss that. Okay. Um. So, how do you manage estrogen? Now, if the immediate answer is an aromatase inhibitor, walk away. Oh, geez, what aromatase inhibitors. Um, so, how do you manage estrogen? Well, dose adjustment, plus or minus change in ejection frequency. That's it. Less than 5% of my guys are on an aromatase inhibitor. If you've got a, a genetic predisposition to increase aromatization, if you're a bit of a boozer, if you're heavy, I mean obesity rather than sort of muscle mass, then uh, you may need an aromatase inhibitor, but it is very rare. Okay, so please, if somebody says, you know, we should, you should have an aromatase inhibitor just in, just in case, or because it's part, it should be part of your standard protocol, uh, they don't know their asses from their elbows, quite frankly. Um, how do you monitor me? Well, regular blood tests and reviews, face to face. Um, we insist on an initial face to face consultation because I want to look my patient in the eye, I want to know who you are, um, and I want to perform a physical examination, something that cannot be done online or via Skype. Um, we do have quite a few international patients, so we do allow them to do some of the reviews uh, via Skype but we do insist on a face-to-face -face every 12 months. How much does it cost? The costs of the services should be fully transparent. TRT is a financial commitment. You should make sure that you can afford it. Now we've done everything to make sure that 
our service is cost effective. Essentially, all you're doing when you come and see us is you're coming to see me. Um, Lydia, Lydia helps uh, on, on the back, back. What's, the, what's, what's the right word to use? Lydia, Lydia's the boss, essentially, but um, I'm, I'm the front man. So uh, she, she, she keeps me in check. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, uh, I've, I've lost my track a little bit. So essentially, that's all good. Um, so should you go NHS or go private? Well, the answer is for the gold standard service and treatment. Yeah, unfortunately, it's private. Um, when you want to look at testosterone replacement therapy, you want to look at uh, lots of things. All the things that we've discussed. Um, if you imagine a cup of coffee from Costa's to two pounds thirty, that's less than that's more than your price of your daily TRT and HCG um, medication if if it's done properly. Um, can you put a price on health? All right, guys. Um, there's a link to the blog underneath this video and uh, come join us on TRT in the UK. It's a Facebook group, it's a closed group, so obviously the only people that can see the information on there is you and, your, and uh, the other fellow members. So, stay safe, ta guys.